Hi, amazing people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So guys, as I was saying, today we are going to talk about marriage and parenting. I'm going to tell you what I've learned in my so years of marriage, and I will tell you the so months of um, parenting. But not that I've not parented before. I've parented, but not, I'm talking in terms of my own baby now. That is baby J. The experience that I had and the previous experience that I had with other kids. But now, majorly, I want to focus on baby JJ. Yeah? Because that's now me. That's me now. How I've taken up being a mom from the word go until where I am now. It's almost six months. My baby's standing. So let's talk about that. So the first thing I want to talk about marriage is saying... Uh, know who you are so that you can truly understand who your partner is if you truly don't know who you are there is no way you're going to understand who your partner is at the end of the day if you truly don't know what is your what is what is your space in this marriage like you should know what is your spray what is your space what is your take in this marriage uh who are you in this marriage what are you providing in this marriage what are you supporting in this marriage what are you not supporting in this marriage? So as a woman or as a man, you should know who you are in the marriage. So you should know yourself better. If you're that kind of a person who is, um, you always want the fun part of it, but you don't want the negative side of it, at the end of the day, marriage has the positivity and negativity in it. So you have to be both in. You can't just say when you're happy or when things are going well, that's when you're in. But when things are going away or when things are going bad, you're not there. So you should always be there. That is why I'm saying you should know who you are so that you can know who your partner is. I don't have to pretend to be a superhero when I know my partner is not a superhero. I'm undergoing to undermine that person at first. I'll show people the weakness of my partner because I'll be showing that I know it all. Like, I know everything. I can do everything. I can tell everything. I'm the only person who can be consulted when something is about to happen or something has to be done. You have to know who you are, your strengths, your goals. How far can you go, you personally, as a person? And how far can your partner go, has himself or herself? Then when you put this energy together, definitely, at the end of the day, you're going to come with one concrete reason and one concrete solution on anything that you guys are going to, to sort. So that's one thing I've come to know. Know who you are so that you can know who your partner is. Number two, communication. Let me tell you one thing. Without communication, there is no marriage. If you're poor in communicating, there is nothing that can ever happen in marriage. You have to communicate with your partner for you to have a successful and a strong marriage. Let's say you have an issue and you don't have, uh, you feel that you're not in a position to discuss that issue with your partner how is your partner going to know the way of solving it like how is your partner going to understand the pain that you're going through if you don't if you do not communicate it truly hurts if there is no communication in marriage and that's why you see so many marriages end up breaking up you see so many people end up insulting each other so many marriages becoming violent because of there is no communication. You will feel, why am I doing this thing? And this person is not seeing what I'm doing. So you have not communicated to this person what you truly want to be done or what you truly want them to contribute to, to anything that you're coming with, the idea you're coming in, in with. So you have to sit down together, no matter how many times you've spoken about it. Let's say in terms of dress code. Maybe as a man, you don't like seeing your wife dressing in short dresses or exposed clothes. Let's say we have in the now we're in the modern culture where people dress whatever they feel like and they want, but as long as you're feeling you're comfortable in it, you can't just dress something short and you feel you're not comfortable. If you're not comfortable wearing something, why should you wear it to please other people? Whereas you yourself you don't have courage to walk like that. You see? So as a man, don't restrict your wife dressing nicely putting on makeup, making the hair, and looking beautiful, just like other women. You just want your wife to look like, you know, wife. You want them to look like a wife. But you don't want them to slay and look good. But at the end of the day, when you're out there, you're busy looking at other other girls, like they're dressing smart. Oh, you will compliment. Oh, today you're looking good. That person is having all, like, all types of all shades of colors in the face. There is makeup, there is eyeshadows, there is those eye rashes, there's long earrings, there's lipstick. 
you name it but to you to your wife you don't want to see that kind of thing so why should you pretend that natural is the best for you and once you meet people outside you're complimenting them so communication is one of them communicate how you communicate is also important how do you receive how do you receive communication how do you take it you know how do you take it so for your marriage to be strong and to succeed communication is the base in fact it's the foundation of marriage that's number two number three honesty don't be that kind of a person who says that uh, you know i'm honest when it comes to finances i'm honest when it comes to discipline i'm honest when it comes to putting things out there to your partner but at the end of the day there is one thing that you're truly hiding that you don't want your partner to know you can be honest in everything everything but there is that single thing that you're not honest about but honesty is the key to everything how do you how do you expect to live with a woman or a man who is not honest to you in marriage maybe you put your money there you expect to meet your money at the end of the day there you left a thousand shillings or 200 shillings or 100 shillings maybe you've put it there to see if i'm that kind of a person who has a picky hand you see you want to see if your wife is a thief or your husband is a thief so you definitely put some money there and leave it so you have done that intentionally you're setting traps on your wife there you don't have honesty like you don't have trust with your partner because you'll know if i leave this money here um, I want to see if Pauline is going to steal. I'm going to see if Caro is going to steal. I'm going to see if Kamo is going to take the money. And you just pretend that you don't know anything about the money you left there. Those are trust issues that you have. And you're not honest. You truly, you're not honest. So you should be honest. Like, you need to be honest. In each and every little details that you have with your partner. Not necessarily finances, uh phones or any other gadget or anything but in each and every single details that you have in your life you need to be honest another thing is consistency consistency in marriage is the most effective thing so i don't have to pretend like let's do one thing for a show i can't tell you let's go to tanzania let's go to dubai and you're doing it just to show people okay you're vlogging you're a youtuber let's do something to please people to show people that you're able but at the end of the day you're not able let's not show people what we are not or don't show people what you are what you're not and show them what you are at the end of the day these people will not they will not they will think that you have the best of the best but when you have a problem will these people help you will these people come in and tell you oh you know we saw you have gone through this and this and this, but we need to help you. There is nothing. So be consistent. If you're used to eating uh, good meals, uh, good family uh, trips, good trip, uh, healthy workouts, healthy, whatever healthy, whatever healthy you need to do, just do it. Don't do it to show off or don't show, do it to, to brag to people that, we can do this you know if you're a man and you're used to having flowers bringing your wife flowers do it continuously don't stop giving your wife flowers or don't give your wife flowers when you need you know that you need something in return and as a wife don't be submissive to your man when you know you want something like how do you even become how do you even show your love language when you truly know that if i give my husband a watch or if i give my husband something and the only thing that they're going to give you is money. That's what you want. Please don't do that. Be consistent on what you normally do. And that thing will help you a lot. Another thing is addressing yourself or addressing your partner. How do you talk to your partner? How do you address your partner? You know, there are some people who will never call you by your name. Maybe they don't know their name. Or maybe they know your name. At any point, even if you're fighting, even if you're having a disagreement, they will always call you the name that they're used to. They are not that kind of people who will call you like, they'll not call you like um, babe or they'll not call you sweetheart in front of people but behind the curtains or behind the cameras they're calling you your true name like, or they're calling you like, they're calling you mama so and so, they're calling you names but in front of people, how do they address you? The way you address your wife in front of people, it will show how much people are going to give you respect. 
if I don't give a positive address to you towards in front of people, how do you even expect people to address me? I'll give an, an for example, let's say how I address my husband in front of people, it will show that I respect him, I have respect for him, I have uh, manners towards him, it will show everything about me towards my husband. You understand? But if I don't respect him, if I shout at him, the way I speak to him, it's not in a good way. People will just be like, oh, I don't understand why Pauline talks to this person in this language or in this way. She seems that she's not disciplined. She doesn't respect the husband. She doesn't do this and this and this. Oh, what's, the, what's the problem with the husband? People will start you know, looking for things to get to understand why is Pauline behaving like this? Like, why is Pauline communicating like this? Why is Kamau doing like this and this and this? I'm just giving examples. Don't come attacking me. Another thing is, when now we go to parenting, what I've learned in parenting is parenting needs patience. If you're not patient, you can't be a good mom. But at the end of the day, we never say that, people never say that women get tired of parenting. No one say that. Parenting is one of the most hectic, just like marriage, because you have to be submissive. If you don't want to be submissive, then I don't think or I don't see how you're going to build your marriage or how you're going to uh, take care of your, of your kids. So with patience, you'll be able to see your child grow. Kids are innocent. They don't know anything. So you don't expect to breastfeed your baby and not to, to throw up. You see? You don't expect to feed your baby and then at the end of the day sell the diapers. So you will do something knowing there is a, there's a result coming back. Either the baby will throw up the food or the milk, burp up, up, the baby will burp out the milk or the baby will pee. And you have to, to, to change the diapers. So there is that tolerance that you have to have, the patience to have, to see your child grow. For me, I thought uh, bringing up a baby, it would be easy until when I gave birth. And I saw it was one of the most tiring, tiresome job that has ever happened to me in my life but because i love this person this person is my blood and this is the version of me the mini version of me and the dad definitely that thing motivates you and gives you joy and more love to see that person grow you don't mind anything you don't mind how you look you don't mind how you feel you don't mind how your body has changed you don't mind anything postpartum depression hits in you're in for it you don't like throw that person away but if it was for marriage and you have you're depressed and everything, you'll end up saying like, okay, you know what? Let's give it a break for some time. When this depression is done, you'll come back. No. For babies, you'll suffer postpartum depression, but you will keep on loving that person. You will keep on taking care of that person. No matter what you do, you will be there to see that person grow. Another thing is growth uh, regressions. So many things change as months go by, weeks goes by. So many things change in your baby. Maybe today your baby was sleeping so well, comfortably. Maybe in the next two weeks you're, you're feeding your baby and the baby is crying all the time. Maybe in another one week the baby has a colic, the baby is just throwing up, has the reflux, the, uh, the feeding reflux, and everything is happening and you don't truly really understand what is happening. You also need to have tolerance and patience as i've said because when the baby is growing so many different things the baby is learning so many different things and so many different things are growing in that baby and so many other things are happening in your life and in the baby's life that the baby even doesn't know what is truly happening i hope that is so clear so also you have to be sober to go through that when the baby grows you grow with the baby i hope that is clear Currently, I'm suffering, uh, I'm having strict regressions. My baby is not sleeping. I don't know why. I thought it is tummy issues, but it's not tummy issues. I thought my baby is not well fed, but my baby is maybe overfeeding because I've checked my baby is taking too much milk, as I've said in my previous videos. My baby is taking too much feeds, and I'm like, am I trying to overfeed my baby? Is my baby going to be obese, or is my baby underweight? Because I truly don't understand why my baby is not sleeping. During the day, my baby is okay. My baby is sleeping the normal hours, maybe an hour or 30 minutes, and my baby is up. So much of the day, my baby is 
much of the day my baby is active sleeping and waking up so currently we are trying to make the baby more active during the day so that at least at night the baby can sleep and same thing to me at least i can be able to uh, sleep and go to work the next day but now what is happening my baby is sleeping my baby is sleeping within five minutes my baby is up crying why i truly don't know my baby want to be held the whole night to sleep or the whole time to sleep but i don't have that energy to hold my baby all the time in my arms for the baby to sleep at the end of the day the baby will never sleep in the bed the baby will always want to sleep in your arms to have your warmth so you have to train your baby to sleep individually like the baby has to sit in the bed you see you can't show your baby that all the time i'm there to hold you to sleep so i don't know if i'm the only person who is going through that maybe comment down below let me know what are you going through if you're a parent you have a small baby who is like five months six months what are your training routines of your baby sleeping is there any change that the baby has changed what are the causes of these sleep regressions i think it's uh for me what i've learned through the uh, the google university is this happens at six months eight months 12 months as we go on and um another thing it's a trend that goes on another thing i've, I've learned is uh, apart from the trend that's going on i've come to know maybe if the baby is having like the teeth want to grow so that thing is also causing the sleep regression or if the baby is unwell or having tummy issues or the baby is not comfortable definitely that thing will happen so i don't know which is which i've seen all happen my baby is oozing a lot of uh, survivors i think it's because of the teeth they want to come out because my baby is growing but i don't think it's the tummy issues or another thing if my baby likes to be held all the time to sleep i don't know which is that can you help a mom here comment down below comment on any of the points that i've said about marriage and about uh, baby's growth so guys i don't have much can we share comment and let's discuss this maybe let me know what you want to see can we share like and subscribe until the next one